Hello, and welcome to Sports Update, where we'll be looking at the latest sports news from around the region and beyond. I'm Braden Parks. And I'm Colin Hill. We'll also look at college football across the nation and check out the latest happenings. This is Sports Update on EU TV. So season ending games and season uh, beginning games starting to get on our feet in some other sports and ending in some other sports. Um, um, let's. Yeah, the Evangel football team, they, they took a rough loss last Saturday. And then, of course, women's soccer having a magical season this year. Unfortunately, they fell to one of the best teams in the nation in rather heartbreaking fashion. But overall, very good seasons for both of those teams. And then I'm excited because our basketball team's starting to tip off their years. And they're both off to pretty good starts uh, comparatively to where they were last season. For sure. The Evangel Crusaders suffered a heartbreaking loss at the hands of the Baker Wildcats on Saturday to end their season 8-3. and three. The Crusaders outperformed the Wildcats in the first half with two Cameron Hardesty touchdowns to Josh Tipps and Ben Friend, giving them a 14-7 lead going into halftime. The Wildcats were explosive in the second half, scoring a quick touchdown in the third and two touchdowns in the fourth. The Crusaders, after failing to capitalize on turnovers and field goals in the second half, did not score until Hawk and Friend caught a six-yard pass from Hardesty with nine seconds remaining in the game. However, this was too late to mount a comeback, and the Crusaders would lose to the Wildcats 28-21. Crusader women's soccer advanced to the semifinals of the Hart Conference Tournament Wednesday. Evangel made the trek up to Fayette, Missouri to take on the Central Methodist Lady Eagles. The Lady Eagles struck early against the Crusaders when Judith Sainz sent a pass across the center of the goal, off the head of teammate Anika Kalash, and into the back of the net for the first goal. This would not be the last time Kalash and Sainz would be in on the scoring, as both would finish with a hat trick as number 5 CMU cruised past Evangel for the 7-0 conference tournament victory. The men's basketball squad traveled up to Iowa over the weekend to take on the Mount Mercy Mustangs in their first conference game of the season. The Crusaders entered play at 2-2, two two, coming off back-to-back -back victories. Unfortunately, the defense continued to be the Achilles heel as Evangel allowed 41 Mustangs po Mustang points in the first half, digging themselves into an eight-point hole. In the second, the Crusaders managed 44 points but surrendered that same total to the Mustangs. Guards Idriel Martinborough and Nate Davis combined for 44 points in the 85-77 loss. The Lady Crusaders evened the record out at 2-2 two two on Saturday with a victory over Mount Mercy. The Crusaders fell behind the Mustangs in the first half but came alive in the third quarter, putting up 25 points while holding the Mustangs to just 9. The Crusaders also shot for 64% from the field in the second half to cement their lead on Mount Mercy. In the victory, sophomore Brianna Vogues narrowly missed a double-double, posting 22 points with 8 rebounds. Final score, 76-55 Crusaders. Over the weekend, three Evangel runners secured their spots at the NAIA National Championship that will take place November 22nd in Vancouver, Washington. Leslie Perona qualified for the first time after she placed 10th at the Heart of America Championship. Perona will, one, will run with 89 others in the women's side of the tournament. Additionally, a duo comprised of senior Duncan Gakaru and junior Shane Burns will return to the National Championship after they finished 32nd at the Heart Championship. Evangel has announced the hiring of new tennis coach Mirko Bielica. Coach Bielica is coming off a three-year stint at the helm of the Western Illinois Leathernecks. He helped the Leathernecks become a formidable opponent once again. As prior to his arrival in the 2016-2017 season, Western Illinois was in the middle of a 34-conference match losing streak. After taking over, Bielica led them to nine victories, as well as a 3-3 three three conference mark. However, he will be facing a completely new challenge here at Evangel as he attempts to build a Crusader tennis program from scratch as the 2020-2021 season will not only be his first, but the program's first as well. 
So some interesting innings and some new beginnings here for the Crusaders. Yeah, as we mentioned, disappointing ends to both Crusader football and women's soccer. But at the same time, I'm excited to see what these basketball teams will bring. And then, of course, the hiring of a new tennis coach, it's a completely new beginning because up until this point, Evangel hasn't had a men's or women's tennis team. So completely new start and really excited to see where that takes off. For sure. Exciting to add another team to our repertoire. Well, up next, we will be discussing the end of the Evangel football season. We'll be right back. Catch all the HD broadcast of Evangel Sports on EUTV through Livestream.com. EUTV features weekly programs like Sports Update and News Watch Today. You can also see award-winning student films from Evangel Filmmakers. Evangel University Television broadcasts to Evangel Dorms on channels 12 and 35-1. You can also find EUTV on Mediacom channel 84 in Springfield. And now, EUTV is on Livestream.com. Broadcasting on the web 24 hours a day. So check it out. Go to Livestream.com, enter EUTV in the search box, and click on the EU icon. EUTV, the home of edutainment. Six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Unfortunately, the Evangel Crusaders football team was unable to make the playoffs in the NAIA, but the good news is it was a terrific season for Evangel football, and Braden, really something that they can build off going to next season. Uh, let's take a look at their final loss uh, against Baker, and it really was a rough game after that first half. They played a really good first half, going up 14-7, to uh, but the second half, it just almost collapsed. Yeah, the first half was looking tight. It was um, it was scary at a couple moments, but overall it was looking very tight. We clean. We got some good plays, you know, some good blocks, some good defensive plays. Um, but you know, in the second half, they got that quick touchdown in the third quarter, which I kind of I think kind of shook things up. But we were able to at least combat them for a little bit. But I think the biggest issue was we just lost our offensive momentum a few times. They had some big stops, some really good punts that put us. Um, one play comes to mind. They put us right down um, at the. Uh, down within the five and then we got a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct against us and so we were really backed up close to the end zone which really I think set in motion for a lot of momentum issues. And you know Evangel they came away with plenty of turnovers in that game. It wasn't it wasn't just the offense or it wasn't just the defense that struggled there in the fourth quarter. The offense had plenty of opportunities prior to quarter number four to really put Baker away and just never were able to finish them off. 
I, I agree. I agree. I think um, that along with um, that goes along with the biggest issue I feel is unable to capitalize on certain events. I think sometimes we would get good drives and we just couldn't finish. Um, Andrew Poppin caught an incredible one-handed interception, but we were unable to score off of the possession um, because we we went down and they would stop us. You know, kind of uh, right before we got to the red zone, and so we had a missed field goal, a blocked field goal, and then a fake field goal that ended up not panning out. So I think those three possessions and then just the concept of being unable to score when it comes down mm -hmm. to those very important drives. I think that's what really, you know, what really killed us in that game. And we can't let this one game overshadow the fact that this was really a tremendous season for incredible Evangel effort, football. Incredible effort. I mean, they lost two of their last three games that really knocked them out of the postseason contention. But overall, they had a terrific season and started off well, beating some very highly ranked teams. And honestly, had a couple calls at Grandview gone their way, we might be seeing them in the postseason even with these two losses. Yeah, you could very much so argue that that Grandview loss should not have been a loss, and it came down to that very last second uh, pass, uh, pass interference call that was very questionable. But, you know, throughout, they beat, um, for the most part, they beat who they were supposed to beat, and we just, we really excelled on defense. There was incredible team chemistry. We had guys on the show all the time talking about the chemistry and the, the chip on the shoulder and the, the determination that sets the Crusaders apart um, in terms of, you know, being hungry and out there to uh, fix what went wrong last season. And the good news is they're not going to be losing everyone heading into next year. Let's take a look at the pairings for the NAIA National Championship playoffs. There were a couple Heart of America Conference teams that made it in. Uh, Baker ends up being ranked number 14 at the end of the season, and they're going to travel to play Kansas Wesleyan. And Kansas Wesleyan, that's a really good team. That's probably where Evangel would have been put in uh, had they won that game uh, so interesting there. Yeah. And then Grandview finishes the season number four in the nation at 11-0, and 0, and they're going to take on Concordia. Yeah, Grandview uh, being able to secure one of the top seeds as Baker uh, secures um, a seed a little bit lower that Evangel would have had. But some really good matches we're going to see here. Uh, Baker sitting at 8-2, Kansas Wesleyan at 11-0, and, and Concordia sitting at 8-2, and, and Grandview at 11-0. So some really good matchups um, in, in some of the thick parts of the championship. Well, coming up, we will be reviewing college football, a Vikings comeback, and Evangel upcoming games. Stay tuned. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. The world is waiting for you to make an impact in the career field God has called you to. He has equipped you with the creativity, skills, and talents you need to be successful. And at Evangel, you'll be empowered with a dynamic education and a spirit-led community that will help turn his design into your life's calling for global ministry in every vocation. Unleash your potential. Visit us today. How do we learn? We learn from study, practice, and concentration. We learn from falling down and from getting back up. We learn from those who have gone before us. We learn from each other. And we learn from looking inside ourselves. And as we learn to learn, we grasp more than just knowledge. We learn the wisdom to apply it. Because learning is more than discovering how to do what we do. It's also discovering why we do it. Evangel University. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. A 
top 25 college football matchup saw the Golden Gophers of Minnesota put their perfect record on the line and travel to the state of Iowa to face off against the Hawkeyes. Iowa started off quickly with a couple of first half touchdowns thrown by Nate Stanley and added one on the ground for Tyler Goodson. This gave the Hawkeyes an early 20-3 lead before the Gophers added a field goal directly before halftime. In the second, Iowa's offense went stagnant and allowed Minnesota to climb back into contention behind a heavy dose of star wideout Tyler Johnson. In the end, Iowa was able to come away with a game-clinching interception on Minnesota's potential game-winning drive to upset the Golden Gophers 23-19. The Oklahoma Sooners were able to recover from a 28-3 deficit at Tehan Baylor, their first loss of the season. The Sooners entered halftime at down 10-31 after a slew of issues both offensively and defensively, but they turned that around in the second half. The comeback effort was the biggest since the playoff era of NCAA football, as the Sooners were able to score a touchdown in the third quarter and two touchdowns in the fourth along with a field goal. Oklahoma's defense was instrumental in the win as the Sooners denied Baylor any score in the second half. And though Jalen Hurts had some issues in the first half with an interception and a fumble, he was able to put Oklahoma on his back in the second half to secure the 34-31 victory on the road. So some big wins, some unexpected wins um, this Saturday for college football. Yeah, it was really good for Oklahoma because that was woof, that first half was nothing short of tragic the way they played. And then to come back in the second half and play as well as they did and for their defense to step up after giving up 31, it was impressive. For sure, for sure. And Jalen Hurts uh, really, you have to give the defense their credit, but Jalen Hurts really did a great job about coming back in after the second half and fixing what he had done in the first with the interception and the fumble, just some dumb plays that he shouldn't have let up and really, really put the team on his back. Yeah, he stepped up, but I mean, we can't neglect the the biggest college football storyline of the weekend uh, to a tag of Iloa going down with one of the most detrimental injuries uh, that any professional athlete can suffer with the dislocated hip and the small fracture. And he, he, we were talking about this beforehand, but I think, I think he'll be able to come back and play in the NFL, but it's, it's still up in the air on whether what his future holds as an NFL quarterback. And it is tragic because you don't, you know, you don't get to see these kids um, or these, these young men, these players come and reach their full potential with an injury like this, getting hurt uh, his junior year of college. And it's just, it's a big injury that can really affect his future and uh, his career path. Right. All right. There's been some shakeup in the top 10 rankings for the NCAA. Let's look at this week's top 10. So at number one, we have LSU with a 10-0 record. Still, and one through three are the same with LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson. Uh, top two at 10-1 and one, and Clemson at 11. Or, excuse me, top two at 10-0 and, and Clemson at 11-0. Yeah, four and five experienced a little bit of shakeup. Of, co of course, uh, two is injury probably played a lot, a big factor in that role. Georgia was able to hold off Auburn, and so they leapfrog Alabama, both teams at 9-1, and one, sitting at Georgia at four and Alabama at five in the latest AP rankings. Oregon will stay at number six um, with the record sitting at nine and one. And Utah will go up one rating um, to number seven with the record at nine and one also. Oklahoma, of course, that big win. They jumped two spots up to number eight. And this was a team that after that K-State loss, you wondered if they were going to get back really into CFP contention. Looks like they're slowly making their way back up there. And then Penn State um, and Florida coming in at nine and ten. Penn State will... Uh, stay at number nine with a record at nine and one, and Florida will raise one with their victory, um, bringing the record up to nine and two. The Vikings also had an impressive comeback this week as they were able to rally from a 20 point deficit to defeat the Denver Broncos. The Vikings' victory was the first of its kind in five years as they entered halftime with very few yards but ended up scoring on four drives in the second half to secure the victory. The Vikings defense was also vital in the victory, forcing three straight incomplete passes in the end zone with the last 10 seconds of the game. Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousin continues to improve his game, going 29 for 35 and throwing 319 yards. The Broncos were looking promising in the first half, scoring on large, time-consuming drives as their defense forced the Vikings to punt on their first four drives, but they fell victim to the relentless short passes and runs that defined the second half of the game. Final score, 27-23 Vikings. 
It was a rematch of Super Bowl 52 Sunday as the New England Patriots traveled to Lincoln Financial Field in Philly to face the Eagles. Philadelphia's defense gave Tom Brady all he wanted in the opening quarter, but only got a Jake Elliott field goal for the early 3-0 lead. Philly added a touchdown on a Carson Wentz pass to Dallas Goddard, but by halftime the Pats had hit three field goals, cutting the lead to one. Defense prevailed once again in half number two with the only touchdown scoring on a trick play where Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman hit fellow receiver Philip Dorsett, which after a two-point conversion set up the eventual final score of 17-10 New England. So certainly no shortage of action this week in the NFL. Yeah, the Patriots, they got a win that they probably shouldn't have gotten, and they're going to have to figure out something on that mm -hmm. offense because their defense is winning them games they, their defense has pretty much won them every single game this year. And without an offense, you just wonder how far that defense is actually going to be able to take them, even though it's Bill Belichick and even though it's Tom Brady. And on the other side of the ball, the Eagles really just need some solid receptions, just need to be able to catch their hands, or to just need some soft hands to be able to, to catch those important game balls. Um, I remember uh, Aguilar was open in the end zone, and the ball just bounced off his hands and his pads, and that would have been you know, very uh, much a game-changing touchdown. They've suffered a lot from injury, too. They've got probably their top three receivers out right now. For sure, injury. for sure. Well, let's take a look at what's coming up for Crusader Sports in this week. Women's basketball will travel to Graceland on Wednesday, November 20th. Or, excuse me, Graceland will travel here on Wednesday, November 20th to play at 5.30. And then um, also will Peru State coming Saturday, November 23rd. Men's basketball will also match up with their home opener against Graceland on Wednesday. That will be after the women's game at 7.30. And then they will also take on Peru State Saturday at 4, also at the Ashcroft Center. Cross Country will travel to the NAIA Championships Friday, November 22nd in Vancouver, Washington. And so some uh, interesting points in the season where we only have two or three things going on right now. Yeah, I mean, we're getting to the place where basketball is going to be the only sport left going in just a couple uh, just a couple of weeks. And it's really going to be exciting to see these teams. We know men's basketball was terrible last season. I mean, we can't really put it any other way than that. But this year, it's going to be exciting because they've got some new talent, the old talent that's returning, much improved. This is going to be a much better product than we've seen from the last couple of years for Evangel men's basketball. Should be exciting. Well, that is all the time we have today for Sports Update. Be sure to join us in two weeks as we bring you the latest in sports news. I'm Braden Parks. And I'm Colin Hill. This has been Sports Update on EU TV. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.